Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Toyota build series here. Today, we're gonna to be installing some exhaust, so stick with it. So I know that uh, the car is not complete yet or painted. You have to put something on this car because there's no exhaust on it right now and it's very loud and it's obnoxious and it's right underneath the car. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and jack this thing up, put it up on the lift and get started with installing this HKS exhaust here. Let's open it up first. Okay, so let's get this thing opened up here. So I think it says this way up, it's kind of covered, but. Okay, so, so it looks like some decent packing here. Doesn't look like anything's damaged yet. Pipe here, I believe this is three and a half inch, so plenty of space for growth. When this car becomes high, high horsepower, you're gonna get all the flow that you need with it. Some people like to go four inch with these, but I think three and a half will be fine for the numbers that I'm going for. If I wanna crank it up a little bit more, I'll just be prepared to go to four inch. Okay, so this is HKS's high performance exhaust. Uh, it's not the carbon TI that everybody goes with. I didn't like the look of the carbon on the bottom here. It just not really, doesn't really suit it for me. I like the whole, you know, clean chrome look on it or polish. And I'm not too big of a fan of this burnt tip on the end of this. I might change it up later on, I'm not sure. The burnt tip looks good and all, but I just, I used to really like it, but now I'm kinda, you know, just like the regular, so. Looks like we have the main pipe here, or the muffler. Comes with gaskets here and a little bit of hardware, so. Let's get all this stuff out and on the ground and then lift this thing up and see what we're up against. Okay, so I believe this should be pretty straightforward to put on here. Start from the front and then start to work our way back. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some new hardware over in the bin there so it looks nice and fresh. No sense using the old hardware with the old exhaust. So I think I found some zinc coated hardware. Let's see if it fits for our needs here. That should do the trick. Little trick with this too as well is use a little bit of penetrating fluid uh, on your exhaust hangers, just a tiny bit. And trust me, it'll make your life a lot easier. It'll just slip right in. One of these bolts started. So I'm not gonna tighten these up completely yet just because if I have to adjust it a little bit, then I can. All right, this thing is freaking massive here. It's like huge. I believe, yes, this is three and a half inch. I'm uh, just looking at it right now. So let's try to get this thing up and figure out what hangers we need to use here. Let me tell you, doing this with one person is definitely a challenge. Uh, it's always going to help getting one extra person or a buddy to help you or whatever with lining things up. This V-band does not feel the greatest. It feels pretty flimsy. Uh, maybe something that I have to get differently later on, but for now, it should be okay. V-bands can be very handy, but also very hard to line up at the same time, especially if you're on your own. The hardest part is to try to get this V-band uh, straightened away here. Okay, I'm just gonna run a little bit of time lapse, tightening everything up here and adjusting it, and then uh, I'll catch up with you guys after. Okay, now that we got the majority of it all bolted up here, let me just say that this exhaust fits perfectly. Everything lines up excellent. You get a little bit of adjustability, it doesn't hit anything, runs all the way through for a pipe this big, for it to actually work and go through. It amazes me that it doesn't hit anything and everything lines up. That's what you get when you pay for the top quality item there. 
HKS has been around for a very, very long time. And I think HKS brand suits the car perfectly just because it's the whole Japanese theme thing. Just gonna lower it down a little bit and uh, adjust a little bit over here. And then uh, we can pull this off and take a look at it and see how it sounds. We can take this wrap off. Oh yeah, that's satisfying. That definitely looks good. Oh, it looks like we can actually adjust the tip on this as well. And you can actually take the silencer out of it. There's a silencer that's in it right now in the inside and you can quiet it up or make it louder with just pulling these two bolts out here. So that's kind of handy. I'm gonna make it stick out just a little bit more. I'm gonna try it first without the silencer. And then I'm going to try it with the silencer after. I know I'm kind of doing this in reverse. If it's already got the silencer in it, I should have tried it. But I'm just going to try it uh, the opposite way there. Just like that, comes out very easily. This is like a long tube thing. So it actually, judging by how it looks, it's going to use more of the muffler because uh, the exhaust will come back and then start using it more. Uh, in this case, it's kind of more of a straight through uh, without this. So we're going to go ahead and try it without. I love when companies think of adjustability and moving these tips out and stuff because obviously you know when you have a super you're going to be shooting flames so it's good to keep it a little bit further out from the bumper so you don't melt your bumper. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I always recommend is wipe everything down all your fingerprints off of it so when the exhaust heats up it doesn't stain fingerprints on it and it keeps it nice and clean. So obviously the mic gets distorted and everything when you're revving something in a garage and it's a little bit colder in here. So that's why you're seeing some condensation come out. Overall, this is the NA setup, have I remind you guys, because eventually we're going to be swapping that 2JZ VVTi uh, GTE engine into this. And uh, we're going to get a nice tubular manifold, down pipes, everything's going to be all nicely fabbed up. It's going to sound a lot better with a turbo behind it as opposed to just the GE engine with no turbos. Overall, the install was super, super easy for this. It fits excellent. I know I had mentioned that I didn't really like the burnt tip on this, but what I could do is I could undo these here on each side flip this thing around and actually cut this off here and then just have the regular tip right here sticking out the back and just cut that in a chop saw or something along those lines, clean it all up nicely. Then I don't have to weld on my own little tip on it. I don't know, let me know in the comments down below if you guys like the burnt tip uh, look or you like it kind of more of a clean look at the back with just the 
polished at the end. Yeah, these are always readily available. These exhausts here, good and easy to get. Like I said, I didn't want to go with the carbon uh, outside on the muffler just because I like the whole cleaner look here. But as you can see, it looks unreal. It looks great on that angle. The angle is perfect. You got a perfect amount of clearance here. And I can adjust that too as well with the, uh, like you can go up and down with it. But I think that's perfect. Can't really go wrong with HKS. I tried to go with older brands like Gretty, some Gretty catbacks out there. There's another brand that I tried to go with uh, as well, but there's just companies out there that don't make them anymore. And it's really, really hard to find. This HKS was readily available. I like it, it looks good, and it suited the needs that I uh, wanted to do. And I have room to grow with the exhaust since I said that uh, we'll be doing three and a half all the way up to the turbo once it's uh, once that GTE engine's in it. That's gonna cut it for today's video, guys. Hope you enjoyed, it was a quick one, I know, but there'll be more to come with this car. Soon enough, she'll be off the paint, and then it's gonna look really, really good. As of for that, guys, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe, talk to you soon.